deep in the heart of Sydney, I visit the Glass Brasserie. Few chefs have more on their plate than restaurateur and executive chef Luke Mangan. What with 21 restaurants in four countries, author of six books and a gourmet range of products to his name, you'd think he's bitten off more than he can chew. But as I come to learn with Luke, being busy creates a special kind of energy and it emanates from him when we sit down together. Luke, it's amazing to be here. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. I can't wait to see what he's gonna make. Well, this is one of our signature dishes. It's uh, a dish I created many years ago. Sashimi of kingfish with soy ginger dressing and a bit of Persian feta goat's cheese. Beautiful. I'm going to make yours and mine. Is that okay? Oh, please so do. Some beautiful thin slices of the uh, kingfish. And you can do this with salmon as well, if you like, or ocean trout. So a good pinch of um, sea salt. Um, and then this is the, the secret herbs and spices dressing. Um, it's so got... you're not going to tell me what's no, in it? <laughs> no. You have to buy the book. Yes. No, I'm joking. The book um, or the product? The book or the product, that's right. <laughs> so what it is, it's um, a pickled, I pickle the ginger and then uh, I get equal quantities of pickled ginger with equal quantities of peeled chopped shallots and mix them together with some soya sauce and some extra virgin olive oil. Wow. And uh, you've got all these beautiful flavours and you just, you know, do it over like that. Almost like you're icing a cake. Yeah, icing a cake, painting a picture. <laughs> Simple, isn't it really? A little bit of feta. And, and this is just a little bit creamy and it adds a nice texture to it. We just finish it with a little bit of cress. It's very simple, isn't it? Lovely. Huh? Do this for a dinner party at home and you can't go wrong. Now we've got to finish it with some really good extra virgin olive oil. We do it from up high. Do you know why? Ah, uh, drama. It looks good, exactly. <laughs> but there's one more step uh -oh. before we eat it. Okay. It's a very important step when yeah. I have food. Because I love food. Right. I love restaurants. I love everything. You've got to have wine with I food. Love the wine. You know what I mean? You must. This is a lovely Chardonnay that we make from the Yarra Valley, and it goes unbelievably well with this sashimi of kingfish with soy ginger dressing and Persian feta. Are you any good with chopsticks? I am, actually. Hang on. Cheers. Cheers, Luke. Thank you. Okay. Beautiful. Are you just saying that? The texture, no. The texture of the fish has that bite back to it. Good. Little bit of al dente. Mm. The creaminess mm. contrasts it well with the ginger. It's great. Thank you. So Luke, mm. you are an absolute legend really? in the Australian culinary wow. field. Thank you, that's very kind. I'm sure you're talking to the right guy. <laughs> Amid his jokes and our light-hearted banter, I wanted to get to know what led him to create his empire. And he said he wasn't too keen on schoolwork. Spent more time outside the classroom than inside the classroom. And fortunately, a few weeks before, I um, did work experience at a restaurant in Melbourne called Two Faces. I rang the chef restaurateur up at the time, Herman Schneider of Two Faces, and, and asked if I could come do an apprenticeship with him. And thankfully he said yes. The first two years were, were washing pots and peeling onions and potatoes and sweeping floors and things like that. And I didn't really get to cook until I was in my fourth year of apprenticeship. I mean, physically cook on the stoves, fish or meat or things like that. So, you know, it was, it was quite a, a tough apprenticeship and he was quite a tough boss. Mm -hmm. um, makes uh, Gordon, well, it makes Gordon Ramsay look like a pussycat, this guy. <laughs> but anyway, um, but it was a good experience and I needed that discipline. So that, that fundamental training and discipline and technique in that cooking was just fantastic. So thankfully I, I did my apprenticeship there. Michelle Rue, a very famous chef from the Waterside Inn, Three Star Michelin, was out in Australia in about 1989 or 88, releasing his new cookbook called Patisserie. Beautiful book and I got it. And I love this book. And I wanted to be a pastry chef when I saw it and oh my God, this is amazing. So I thought, I'm gonna go work with him. Wow. Uh, I wrote. And a few weeks later, I got a letter back saying, um, sorry, we have a wait, two-year wait list for any new staff to work in the kitchens. Wow. So I was a bit gutted. I had a chat and said, look, you know, I got your letter, thank you, but you said I can't come work for you, but, you know, I'm coming over in a few weeks, I really want to work. And he said, no, two-year wait list. Wow. Wow. I wasn't happy. So something made me say this to him. What about I come and work a month without pay for you, and if I'm any good, you give me a job? And he wow. said, we'll see you in a few weeks. That is tenacity and it paid off. Wow. Best thing I ever did. 
I had such a good talk with Luke that we explored the second half of his career in a different episode. I learnt that just a sprinkling of good luck. Well, I tell you, this is a funny story. This is a luck story as well, because my life's a luck, all luck, I think. <laughs> Found him teaming up with one of the world's best known billionaires for some high flying success. By the way, your boss wouldn't be Richard Branson, would it? I said, yeah. 